Ratchet Radio wants to take a few minutes to thank Akrona for the lovely new artwork she's done for us. I ain't seen a more talented artsy-fartsy gal since my gran exploded. Hats off to ya. It's fantastic! Hello and welcome back to Ratchet Radio Season 2. Well, I say Season 2, but it's more like a return from the eternal slumber that is the internet. Today I'm joined by two veterans and what I thought was ghosts when I first encountered them earlier this evening. First, from Silver in his Edrasil, and from the neutral land of the Argents, Andrigo. Welcome back, Jusman. Hasn't it been a while? Yeah, it's been a while. A long time. Oh, a year? More? More than a year. God. It's been 13 months. That's how long it's been. Way too long. Why, why didn't you wake me up sooner? Guys, like, I, I've been asleep the whole time. Yeah, well, you know, there's some things that I've just been able to do way more with you asleep, Andrigo. I, I suppose that is true. I, I, I do keep, well, <laughs> <laughs> to yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, 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 let's 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 what I do in our personal time the better. We said season two would be more professional. Anyway, right then, we do have some changes to announce. Uh, but first, Edrasil wants to give us an update on what's been going on in our 13 month break. Essentially, my laptop broke. The charger broke off into it, and I thought that the computer itself had just you know, I mean, smash, and I didn't have the money for a really long time to do anything about it. And maybe a couple of weeks ago, I looked at my laptop and I figured out that it hadn't, the charger hadn't broken off inside it. So I got a new charger and it's working. And although we've um, been slow to sort of get back into things, it's all fixed and all ready to go. So here we are. So it's, it's, it's been a long time. Thankfully, Edrasil, our editor in chief, has come, has come back. Andrigo has come back on board and they've wheeled me out of my wheelchair into the recording booth and Mr. Goblin announcer will be doing an announcement starting the next proper show but I think that Andrigo has the new format of the show to announce to you guys Yeah, we decided that since we're going to be giving this another go we wanted to make things more professional as the old man the wheelchair has said and the first thing we're going to, we decided to do uh, was to cut things down quite a bit. We did tend to ramble a little bit, tend to, I suppose, beat around the bush in a few moments. You know yourselves, if you listen to this now, you've listened to this before, you know what I'm talking about here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and bring the show down to about a half hour, 35, 40 minutes maybe, but you know, we're, we're cutting it down quite substantially of what it was to make it more of an easy listening thing to just fire on and give it a listen to as opposed to you know committing to an hour and a half or... I think even more in one or two situations. I don't know what happened there, but look, we're focusing a little more now. Now, this has mean that something's ha had to also be omitted from from the uh, from the show, which does include, fortunately, our guests. Now, we might bring someone on someone on, on special occasions if there's anything exceptionally big happening, or if someone is so insistent that we just have to let them on for the sake of our own sanity and peace. But for the most part, it's just going to be 30 minutes, and we're going to keep things more refined. What is staying, of course, has to be the more essentials. If we're going to talk about the realm and what's going on, news has to remain. Uh, we're going to divide up to factions as usual. We're going to make a bit more of an effort as well to make sure we're promoting things a bit more ahead of time. Given that we have less of a time commitment to the show, it means we can get things done a bit quicker and be a bit more responsive to what's going on, and no more of these... Uh, late after the fact broadcasts as we did unfortunately have in the past. We are also going to con continue our tradition of the debate or discussion of the day, depending of course on the topic we choose. Sometimes we will be arguing with each other, sometimes we won't be. I, fr I promise I'll be a bit less belligerent in the future, but I can't say anything for Edgerson over here, <laughs> who just keeps poking me under the table right now as I'm talking. So that's basically going to be the basic format as we're going, going on from this, like I said, just to su summarise it. 30 minute segments we a lot more focused on news and promotion than we were before and just to say as I mentioned earlier our Goblin announcer will be returning and we will are still doing guild advertisements and campaign advertisements you just got to give us an email the usual address which is ratchetradioad at gmail.com send us an email saying what you want to announce and why and if we can do it, we'll put it to our announcer. He'll do it during the breaks in the middle of the show. 
If you do want anything else announced, uh, again, go to the email. But tweeting us is also quite a good way of doing things. I mean, uh, I was tweeting away on our behalf when we were having an, our board meetings with the Goblin Executives. And so follow us at rradioad, at rradioad. I think that is everything we have to announce, as it were. Mm -hmm. Am I correct, gentlemen? Yep, that's it. I believe so, yeah. So, should we move on to our sort of general news updates discussion thing? Yep, let's do that. So, should we right. start with Horde news? I feel like the most prominent one is the current PvP campaign in, in Darkshore. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. I agree. It's um, organised by the Rock Guard. Um, on, well, essentially from the breakdown of uh, Iron Dawn's campaign, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, the poor unfortunate soul that is Iron Dawn has gone off to enter Irish politics. I, I wish him all the best of luck. And I am also quite glad I'm not in his constituency. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah. You can't say that. Dwarven might controlling the Irish masses. Anyway, this isn't about... Those, dwar those dwarves are rather conservative now, that's... That's true. Anyway, this isn't about Irish politics. <laughs> about WoW politics. Anyway, so Important. interesting yes. news. Um, there's a the next uh, convocation of, of Qua, Qua, no, Conclave of Quathas. I cannot believe I got that wrong. Anyway, the Conclave... You were even at that before. I know, I know. It's because I had another thing that had a convocation. Anyway, point is, yep. another Conclave coming up. It's going to be good. Rathalion is coming back. Uh, always interesting. I can assure you that when I attend, it's going to be fun. I'm not going to cause too much trouble again again but i will have my certain opinions anyway it's you know sign up if you've got a guild if you're just a lone representative that's going to be incredibly fun and that's coming up uh, at the end of this month um so that's going to be really really fun um obviously pvp in dark Shore, a lot of people will say that this is crazy why would there be any chance in this world or on drain or any twisting nether region why there would be Alliance and Horde fighting each other with, you know, with what's just happened in, in Hellfire, uh, in the Citadel, you know, everyone working together, even the dubious Iron Horde leader, Gromash, who just committed genocide is n and is not punished for said crimes. Anyway. Um, <laughs> that, just, that doesn't matter because Draenor is free. That doesn't matter, man. Draenor is That's free. completely irrelevant. That, you know, war crimes, pfft, no, we never, no one's ever been prosecuted for war crimes in this setting. Exactly, and nah, that is why. Ever, no. Never happened, never happened. Ever. Exactly, and that is why, apart from um, Garrosh, don't forget the, the actual book, um, I, 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 I was kind of poking at that, yes. It seems I've, I'm lost on your humour. <laughs> again. <laughs> again. Anyway, so, from that premise, we clearly have got this fantastic event, which has been organised you know, in a great way from, uh, by the Rock Guard. Um, I've attended a couple of times myself, but obviously with I'm, I'm forced to use my laptop at the moment, and it hasn't got a very good graphics card, so I go in and it's sort of like, I spend about half an hour trying to get, you know, five meters ahead of me, and by that time I'm dead. So, it looks fantastic, and, you know, it's a lot of fun, a lot of people have said it's been really, really fun, a lot of movement between Ash and Vale, I've seen a lot of people go there, Darkshaw, Felwood, etc. looks really, really fun, I think that is probably the main thing that's going on at the moment, that should be lots and lots of fun, so if you're not involved, get involved. But yeah, Alliance News? Alliance news on the whole has been fairly quiet, as far as I can gather. There have been different guilds rising and falling, sort of stormwind politics. Well, let's not even touch that. But that's the main, not, that's that's the, main the main thing has really been the PvP event, as far as I can tell. I mean, personally, I haven't really been in the game that much because I've been away from sort of my computer for a long time now. But the PvP event does seem interesting, does seem good. Uh, well done on the rock guard for picking up on the Iron Dawn's campaign. That 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 looked interesting. Uh, well, actually, the only thing I can sort of say was that there was a Hinterlands event about a month and a half ago, which was interesting. Yeah. Uh, but there wasn't. There's not really much been going on. Uh, Andrigo, anything you've noticed? Well, again, like I said, it has just been quiet. The, the main things I've seen that have been flaring up would have been um, the usual political storylines and dramas. Um, now, the less about those, the better. The only thing I will say on that regard is if you're going to start messing around with politics and power plays and Stormwind, I personally don't really want to know too much about it because it just seems a little bit iffy. Mm. If, if, if it's, he... if, well, no, it, it's, it's, I'm not going to get into it because that is, I think, part of one of our discussion topics. 
with the whole politics and power playing thing, it, it can create a lot of bubbles for people. And that's, it can be a bit exclusive in, in a lot of ways and confusing, especially for new people coming into communities. To why is this happening? Why is there a riot at the castle? What's all this about? And it can just be a little bit... I, I, I don't know exactly what the proper word for it there really is. It can be a little bit... I'm saying iffy. But that's it, not it entirely be correct. It can be a little messy, bit, messy. bit messy, obviously, yes. Especially when there's pregnant women being shot. That's not too um, that, that's, that's That's not go there. It just seems like it doesn't completely belong. You know, that sort of thing doesn't seem like it completely belongs in that area and in that part of the set. I think the problem is, not that it doesn't belong, but it's the fact that people just do it badly every single time. It is just done... A lot of assumptions are made, a lot mm. of assumptions are made, and they're not entirely correct and they don't fully belong. Yeah. Recently in Heartland, there has been a gathering event held by the Crusaders of Turalion and their Gilead Zoo, which was an attempt at a cross-faction event to gather as many willing participants from both sides as possible to one neutral central location, where they would essentially build bonds and reinforce the notion of the truce. And there was a lot of war games that happened, there was a lot of wonderful stories that came from it, a lot of, um, a lot of friendships built, it was wonderful as someone I suppose on the sidelines a little bit, given that I'm more of a neutral individual, uh, to see this happening. It was certainly wonderful to see a place that's a little bit out of the way have such life in it for the fortnight. A lot of events came from it, a lot of good role-playing came from it, and it was just a fantastic example of what um, community events and inter- and inter-guild relations can be in the server, and it was just, it was absolutely, it was, it was a testimony to what good things can happen from the, from the server. And it was definitely something I'd like to see a lot more of. It was a fantastic way to start back the year. I think right then, uh, that's Alliance news, that is Horde news. Should we go on to the big general news, which has happened since our sort of departure from the internet for 13 months? Legion! It's happening, people. We're about to get screwed over, big time. So screwed over. Yeah. Absolutely destroyed. Now, I don't think we're going to go too much into spoiler territory here, because I don't want... I personally don't want anyone to listen to this and start getting quite annoyed because, you know, we start discussing quest lines or character developments, and I don't want anyone to be annoyed at us. So uh, I think we'll just, you know, we'll keep it to the official briefings more than anything else. Um, yes. Now, of course, if the grand assessment of things is that we, you know, the people who want us to talk about things a little more in depth, by all means. But uh, I think, for my part, I'm going to keep made speculation more than anything else at this point. Mm. I will say one thing though. There is one thing that in Legion, and this might be a bit of a spoiler alert, but there will be demon hunters. Oh man, like no one saw that coming. I, Nobody saw that coming. I feel like I have to say it, like the world needs to know. So, so pretty much... And, and, and is this only for a select few people, or is everybody and their mother going to be rolling a demon hunter? Everybody and their mother is going to roll a demon hunter. That is the official comment from Blizzard. Now, my own question about this is, and I'm actually going to open this up to everybody. Is this going to be Death Knight Apocalypse version 2? Or yes. are we going to see an improvement of the situation from before? Are we going to see people be a little more mature about this and a little more level-headed in how they approach the class and bring it into roleplay? No, it'll be a Demon of DK Apocalypse 2.9. Except probably worse. I say worse because Death Knights would... Because you had Knights of the Ebonblade would gather together. The Illidari aren't... I don't think are going to be quite as forgiving considering what happened in BC and also the fact that demon hunters tend to be solitary anyway. Uh, just how do you feel about this? I think that it's going to be really interesting to see how people manage to do it. Or, of course we know that there is a strong elf community, blood elf community, sorry. And with demon hunters being thrust upon that, we will, I will have no doubt in my mind that there will be demon hunters in Silver Moon you're hanging out with all the strange people in the bazaar. No offence to the people that actually use the bazaar properly. I know there are a lot of people who use it, but, you know, stock phrase. Um, and I think it's going to be really tough for anyone to really trust a demon hunter scheme unless it's unless it's made by someone who is well known. And I think that's going to be the struggle. It is always going to be a struggle. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it happen. I really want to see it happen. I want to see something good. So, so what we can take from Legion is high body count, DK mm-hmm. Apocalypse 2.0. Yep. And a potential for lots of good roleplay. A potential. I certainly hope so. Potential. Which hopefully will not be squandered. 
Let's hope not. Look, uh, as long as nobody goes out there and starts, you know, in the first week, does an event where they go ahead and punch that girl to the face and say they won, I think we'll be okay. They should make, they should make that quest line, especially in the Badlands. As long as Corfax is the one doing it. On that note, should we get to our discussion of the day? So, today's discussion of the day was one that we sort of sat down and chose carefully, because we want to we want to approach it logically. So, we thought we should start with, was Warlords of Draenor a success? Who wants to start? My gut instinct is to say no. From a gameplay point of view, yes, it was a success. It, it added in new mechanics, it added in enjoyable questing experiences for the most part. You know, I did like the imp improvements that were made to the professions, again, for the most part. I personally, as an alchemist, am a bit disappointed with, that, with the lack of content there, but that's neither here nor there. On a whole, the environments are very good, the uh, new creatures are very interesting. It was, nice to, it was nice to have a different perspective on familiar settings. It was nice to have that little bit of nostalgia with it as well, that was good. In terms of role-playing, I don't think it contributed much of value. I really don't. I think there's just a lot of confusion about it. It was something that came out of left field, and it really just made a lot of headaches and a bit of a mess. I mean, the hell now I know I'm. I know it's not my 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 particular I suppose scene, but I've heard an awful lot of uh, complaints and stories about Iron Horde role players just turning even Orgrimmar and in mass almost just waltzing about as if it's their, you know. This is fine, this is normal, this is cool. And I just, I, you know, I, I'm not going to blame these people because I put it down more to the lack of exploration of what was actually going on in the expansion. It seemed very, that there was all kind of just rushing from one thing to the next and there was no in-depth kind of discussions about, you know, consequences or where we go from when things end. It just feels like it was more of a... It feels like the whole, the whole expansion was just a vehicle to get us from beating up the Horde and Siege of Orgrimmar to Gul'dan opening up a gateway and unleashing literal hell upon all of us. I, I just don't think it was enough. I don't think it was substantial enough. Well, I think I was about to say, coming from uh, Andrigo there, is that as an expansion, minus Gorgrons, because my god I hate that zone, um, the leveling experience was fantastic. Shadowland Valley, my favourite zone. Uh, Velen, who is my favourite lore character in the world. It was nice. Okay, why it wasn't our Velen? It was nice to see Velen doing something. Okay, I didn't like he died, but still, I thought it was very good. The story for 6.0 was very well structured, very good. Uh, and then that's when it begins. That's when it began to fall apart because the only story after that we really got was through the legendary questline. I've got to say, uh, the legendary questline story was the best I think WoW has ever done. I've got to say, um, personally, because I love Khadgar and Gul'dan, again, favorite, some of my favorite lore characters, and good seeing them go up against each other, mainly because I'm a mage and I also play Warlock, so Mage vs. Warlock, also my garrison, I have Khadgar for this Gul'dan statue, and that's quite fun. But it was very, it was very much a vehicle to Legion. It, you know, I always said from the word go with uh, Warlords, people, people who know me well, sort of back when was announced. I said, I said, at the beginning, Warlords is not going to work, uh, and I was proven right. Although, I wish I really wasn't, because it was nothing what I personally expected it to be. Uh, everyone thought Miss Pandora was the bridging expansion. Well, no, it wasn't. I think Miss. Everyone needs. Everyone, I think, looking back at Miss Pandora now realizes, Mist was a very good expansion compared to what we got in Warlords. Warlords was rushed, it was unfinished. Uh, was it a successful expansion? Mechanics wise, it's built on up on things which need to be built up on, it's given us new things, it's giving the foundation of things for Legion. Story wise, eh, if you use time travel as the main thing to be a plot of a book, it's never going to work anyway. It's works in video games, so you can't really use time travel. But, um, Legendary Quest Line, I like that a lot. Uh, let's not even talk about URL because she can go die in a hole for all I care. On the whole, I think it was a failure, but not a complete failure that everyone's saying it is, if that makes any sense whatsoever. For me, there are a lot of positives and there are a lot of negatives. Positives, storyline, 
was kind of fun in terms of what the quest was. You see a lot of people from you know the old games. If you're a big Warcraft mm. one, two, and three player, you see a lot. You know, you feel a lot. You f I mean, it's a shame about um, oh, what's the island place that wasn't involved? Farallon. Farallon yeah. Farallon. Shame about Farallon. That was a really big kick in the nuts from Blizzard. Thanks for that. Um, but in terms of everything else, like I liked like positive for me, Gnar. I love Gnar. Gnar was I I played an orc a lot during all of Draenor, unsurprisingly. And Gnar was just the best thing to ever like he was just the best character in that ending scene from Frost, Frostfire Ridge just ugh, he got me. Anyway, so I liked him and I liked the quest and I liked those sort of in around the map sort of bonus quest thing that gave you loads and loads of XP and that just made leveling so much easier. You didn't have to do the quest to get somewhere and for someone who's not very good at leveling, that was fantastic and that really helped me, especially with my alts and just getting characters up in general. So yeah, in terms of that, the story was, you know, was okay. What the biggest disappointment was is that it quickly became clear that it was just a bridging expansion. It held no significance other than being, you know, other than hyping up the Warcraft movie, it didn't really do much, as both of you have said, it, it really didn't take us anywhere. All it did was deal with Garrosh, and it dealt with, you know, getting people, essentially finding Gul'dan. It's essentially, that is what Warlords of Draenor was all about, making sure Gul'dan was available for Legion. That is literally it, because he's dead in our time. Sorry, spoilers. Um, <laughs> But you know, that's the, that's the point. I was there was nothing else other than that. So I mean, what can you do? But it was an enjoyable expansion to a certain degree in the beginning, and then it just fell off really hard, like really, really hard for me. And and there's not much else you can do. So we're stuck in this intermittent time period of what goes on, especially for roleplay. And I feel really, really sorry for raiders. Not so much for PvPers, because PvP, you know, you can keep doing it. That doesn't change, even though I can imagine it does get boring having to do that all the time. Raiders, you know, you're stuck doing the same content, and that just must be boring as hell. And even for role players, you know, role players are a great way of finding time to do things in between doing content. And if there's no content, role play is fantastic. But like, thankfully for us, we have a way of getting through that. I just love it how none of us have mentioned Carabor and Blaze Bastard Zell and the Hexes Crystals. But why would we? No one ever goes the in point. there. Well, the whole point, the whole point with uh, Carabor and Blaze Bar is that they were meant to be our capitals. I mean, look, look at them. I mean, sometimes I just log out. I just look, stand in Carabor and just love it, because that was meant to be that capital. Blade Star, Blade Star Citadel. If you have, if you go upstairs in Blade Star Citadel after you take it for the horde, you'll see vendors. You'll see actually, it was unfinished. They began putting it together as a capital, and then they gave us, as I refer to them, fought copy and paste, Storm Shield and Wolf Spear, because they're just the same thing as our garrisons. And the Pexus crystals. Well, let's let's face it. We it was, it was more grindy than Valor and Justice ever were. They were timeless coins, but I know the name. Exactly. Um, and the fact, I think, that 6.0's uh, PvE content was mainly... Well, was Apex Crystals, and then Tanan Jungle was Apex Crystals again. I mean, the only, the only redeeming feature there is for Tanan Jungle is that it's so monotonous, you can just turn off your brain and do it and level up your ults and do it that way. Well, it, it, it does tie into the, the monotony and the lack of content and imaginative content, meaningful content even, that the expansion had, and that, that we, we closed out exactly as we did before with just a place full of red dots that you had to hit. It wasn't... There was no great meaningful connection to it because we hadn't this was a, a left field foe that was just thrown at us for us to beat up and probably win against in a very short space of time it wasn't something that we built up a connection to that we had this burning desire to take out I mean, at least with Garrosh and Mr. Pandaria we, we've had him in the background for ages he, he was built up and eventually revealed as this great tyrant that he was and we went in and we took him down and that felt satisfying. There was a lot of great roleplay leading up to that. But with this, with Tanan Jungle, there was nothing. There was no chance for that because it was almost overnight. Snap of the fingers, boom, here we are. Suddenly the demons in our face. Yes, I know there was other of it with the legendary quest line and with some er some of the areas in the game. But they weren't our focus. Our focus was on something completely different. 
Exactly. And I just felt there was no way to build up to it. There was no emotional, I suppose, tension that you would have had. That you knew this was your big enemy and you're finally getting to take it out. You've been building up this garrison, building up this army, and now you can do it. It was... But like I say, it was just out of left field, and it just it was very anticlimactic in a lot of ways. I think it just I, ended like that. I think what they missed out was you, they turned um, Snow and Jungle into a Timeless R 2.0. What they could have done, and what it worked far better, if they made R the Thunder 2.0. I think the, the the worst part is that Tanan Jungle was the current content, but none of us could actually roleplay in it because it was yeah. at level 100 and there were so many mobs and everything. And what, what can you do? That's I mean, for the roleplayer, that is the, the the biggest struggle. You know, a lot of the time you're not the highest level, you haven't got the best gear. I know it's easy to get, but you want to roleplay in the in the specific places, the places that are in the current lore that you're roleplaying in. It's the world you're reacting to the world, and you can't really do that. It's hard to keep yourself relevant if that if you so if you chose to go down that path, given the limitations of the area and what the what the designers thought we should be doing there is it's it is frustrating. It is very frustrating. Incredibly. And if if you are listening and you agree with us or you disagree with us, please mention them in the comments. We will read them out at the beginning potentially at the next episode. Uh, the ones that we like, why not? <laughs> And once we disagree with the world, you'll just be throwing them in the fire somewhere else. No, I will. I will read someone out. I will. I will read one person's or more who disagree, and one person's who agrees, and we'll get you know a little bit of discussion in, or something like that. Anything. Anyway, I believe that is the time. Many thanks for listening, from our end. Yes. Um, many thank you. Many thanks, and gentlemen, welcome back to Radio Radio. Listeners, welcome back to Radio Radio. Uh, we promise to be a little more prompt yes, in the future. <laughs> we do. So until next time, uh, as always, keep on role playing, keep on rocking, and good night, friends. <laughs>